Hey everyone, this is Martin from How To Make Mobile Games on YouTube. Today's video is a developer diary video. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a, a new social network called HazeApp into one of our games. Uh, I'm actually going to update it because it's already been included. And I'm also going to change around some of the ad positions as well. Uh, but the main thing in this video is is the HazeApp part. So it, if, you, uh, if you're not aware of it, HazeApp is, is a social network kind of like open fame. Uh, players can talk about games, they can submit scores, they can uh, challenge each other, they can share their scores on Facebook and things like this. And I'm going to show you this in the game now because we, we already installed this in, in the first version. So if you notice in there underneath we've got this sort of check-in button underneath the play button and if I tap on that what it does is it shows up uh, some some pre-written text that we put in by code and it says uh, hey check out my score is super bug killer this is the Android version by the way uh, and then if I check in what it does is it will submit that score and I can return to the game or I can play with friends um, I'm gonna click on play with friends and what I can do on this page here is I can invite all of my friends to play I can also tap on Facebook and I can invite them to play as well so you know that that part of it is pretty uh, that's good for developers who are looking to get their game more sort of virally aware get players sharing get challenging each other and for games like ours it's this is really useful because basically our games are the X series games that we have are pretty much score based games so they're the type of games where you just want to get a higher score there's not a huge amount of content it's all about be beating your best score so something like haze up is really important if I tap on this uh, top left part here, uh, oh, that actually takes me back to the game, sorry. I'll just go to my HazeApp icon, uh, if I can find it. So there in the main, in the main screen. And just to give you a quick intro, it shows you all of what, uh, you know, like all what the players are pe uh, posting, like their recent check-ins. Check-in is when they've played a game, they've just played it. And what HazeUp will automatically do, will it will automatically submit that game to HazeUp, this, this wall here to say, hey, you know, Amy just checked this game in and played it and she left a message. Um, you can also see what other players are, are playing as well and you can challenge them. So it's really good. I recommend checking it out for sure. And so what I'm going to do today is I already got, as you saw, I already got the, uh, the check-in button integrated in Superbug. And all that does is check in the score and then and then post it to my wall and then people know about it. But I want to take it a little bit further. I want to get the leaderboards in there. Uh, and one of the guys from uh, Hazap actually got in touch and said, hey, you know, we've got the leaderboards uh, up and running now. Uh, and this is the page here. So this this looks pretty cool. And I've not integrated this yet. This is, this is the first day that I'm going to try to do this. So that's why I say this is a developer diary and not a tutorial. But... If you do want to follow me along and see how I'm doing things, and you'll probably be able to do that because I have checked some of the documentation and it seems pretty straightforward. So we'll call this a developer diary slash tutorial here because it's not actually planned out. I'm sort of doing this on the fly right now. Uh, but this looks pretty cool. You know, we've got the leaderboards. Um, uh, this one looks like the one that sort of pops up, pops up half screen. We've got a full screen one in there as well. Um, so they said here, like, uh, you got your new score overlay, uh, which is sort of a banner at the top, which looks pretty cool. Uh, full leaderboards, which is like a full screen, and you can challenge people. This challenge button is pretty cool, so if, if, if you tap in on challenge, players can then challenge their friends to come and play the game. Um, challenge and invite. Challenge friends who don't have the game or invite those who, who don't. That's really good. That's very good for, like, viral, excuse me, for viral activity. And that's becoming more and more important now in games, especially especially on Google Android, um, uh, on the Google Play market. The reason being is that we can, uh, from from based on our experience, uh, not to sidetrack too much here, but based on our experience, we can't use uh, so many SEO tactics in Google Play now because it's too risky. Um, what we've had is we've actually had our Google Play account cancel, cancelled twice which has caused a problem, uh, obviously, because the games aren't available, so we have to find a new account and re-upload the games and change the names and blah, blah, blah. So that, that's a big problem. So we can't push too many keywords inside of the description now because Google Play doesn't have a check. They don't have their own um, evaluation before the game goes live. They could just do a random check on the game, 
one of your games in, in all of your games and then see, oh, this has got a lot of keywords. You know, no, it's been flagged, it's been suspended. Uh, they'll check another game just randomly. Oh, that's also been suspended, suspended, and then you, your account is cancelled. And then it, it, it's uh, it's big trouble. It's big, big trouble that. So we can no longer risk too heavy uh, keyword SEO. We have to do more of the marketing outside of the app, outside of the Google Play market, and that's where things like Haze app come in. So that's why I'm I'm focusing on this and trying to get it into all of our Android games. So hopefully you guys can play along and uh, sorry follow along and then see see how it goes. So um, let me think. So first things first, I've got Unity up here, and this is the main menu screen. So I want to I want to I want to change this button here to say leaderboards, and uh, I want to make this quite prominent, and so that when the player comes in, they're going to play it, and then the next thing they're going to do is probably go to the leaderboard to make that a big feature. Uh, you know, make it front and center. So I'm just going to go through the docs here, and uh, oh, by the way, to to get to this. The page that you're seeing now, go to developers.hazeapp.com. The sign-up is real easy. It's just your name, your email, set a password, and then and then boom, you're done. And then if you're going into uh, developer.hazeapp.com forward slash dashboard, you can see all of your games here. Now, to add leaderboards into uh, into your game through Hazeapp, you have to click Add Game. And then what you need to do is you need to tell it the... Uh, Android package ID and I'll show you which one this is this is the for us if you find your game on the Google Play Market if you go to play.google.com do a search and then it's after the ID equals and it's this one here and then before that and feature sometimes it doesn't have this and feature part on it's just the last part the com.cobaltplay uh, cobalt.super.bug.killer copy that paste it in there do a search and then you can click on claim and then then you've claimed that's that's your game, uh, and so that's why how this has appeared here. So you know definitely go in there and check it out, guys. And this is this is a Unity tutorial. This is, they have the Unity SDK now, and this is the first time around for checking it out. Um, when you do get the download, what you'll get is um, I can't remember exactly where you'll download the SDK. I think it's from here. I get the checking get the leaderboard SDK is this one here, and if I click on uh, my Finder window. I should be able to locate it. What you will get is this Haze App SDK 3.99 zip file. Open this up and then I'm going into the docs and I'm clicking on Unity. And the actual Unity SDK is inside there, inside this Unity SDK folder. Okay, but to open the docs, if you just double click on Unity SDK, then it opens up this page here, which I'm going through right now. So I'm just going to pause the video there for a second, guys, and I'm just going to do a really quick read through and just double check this. Uh, I don't want you to sort of watch me just read these things. I'm going to quickly browse over and then I'll come back in a second. Okay, so I've just had a quick double check and the first thing that we need to do is import the Haze app Unity package so that we have access to the scripts. Uh, so what I'm going to do is click on Assets. I'm going to import Custom Package. I'm going to go to find the Haze app download in my Haze app folder 3.3.9 Unity SDK and then Haze app Unity package is the one you want. Click on open and this should show us a list of yeah all the things that are going to get imported. So I'm just going to quickly look down. What I usually do when I'm looking down at this import part here is I'm just checking the files that are getting imported. Or more specifically, what I'm doing is I'm looking at these folders, and the reason I'm doing it this is that if the, if I build the uh, Android APK file, if there's any kind of conflict and I'm getting errors uh, after I install this, I need to be able to just delete all those files again. And if all of the files are under a single folder, then it's very easy to delete everything and then start again. If the files, if these files are all over the place in different folders, then I want to just be able to track if if I need to delete the folder, uh, sorry, I need to be able to see which files I need to delete. So usually if I see like a file that might be up here in a different folder, I'll take a screenshot of this this page here so that I can go back later and, and then delete them out. Uh, that's happened before, so it's a good practice, guys. But here it looks like everything is labeled Haze app, so I could just search for Haze app and then just delete them after if I need to. Haze app, uh, plugins, Android. Well, actually, this, this NDK, NDK, uh, NDK, all of this here. So this this is uh, there's some things here that are not called Haze app. 
So I'm actually going to take a screenshot of these here. A uh, screenshot, by the way, I'm clicking Command, Shift, and 4 on the Mac uh, to do this. And I am just going to take a screenshot of these here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And this isn't like a perfect way to do this, but these screenshots, if, if everything gets integrated okay and there's no problems or errors, then I can just I can just delete these screenshots later. It's not a big problem. But it's just in case I get any immediate errors after trying to do a build. So once I've done that, I'm going to click Import. And this should take a second because it looked like there's quite a lot of files in there. Uh, the original integration of the Hayes app SDK was just to do this check-in, the functionality that I showed you at the start of the video. That went through pretty smoothly. and There wasn't any any issue at all. You don't even need a user ID, uh, sorry, a game ID. You just need to check in the game, uh, click check-in, and then what will happen is eventually that game will get registered on their social network. But what you, if it doesn't get registered um, for a few days, you can actually send an email to, I think it's support at hayesapp.com, and tell them, hey, my game's now got Haze app. It's on Google Play. Can you please make it live on your network so that it becomes available to users? All right, so we've got this integrated. We've not got any errors popping up. These are just warnings and some uh, console printouts. And if I tap on Haze app, let's see what we've got. Probably got quite a lot of files in there now. Yeah, bridge. Duh, duh, duh. I was actually looking for a haze up folder. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm just browsing to see what was what was actually added to this Android folder. Like this NDK folder here was added. Um, see haze up NDK bridge. I don't know exactly what this does here, uh, but I think actually this might be the this is probably the the iPhone. Actually no, because it's underneath Android. It wouldn't be the iPhone. Uh, it wouldn't be the iPhone scripts. But I just want to familiarize myself with what's actually getting put into the project so that, like I said before, if there's ever a problem, I can go back in and then delete everything out and that, that then I can start from scratch. Uh, because with new SDKs, that can often be the case. So, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click File, Save, Scene, Save, Project. I'm going to do a build to make sure that it's running okay. I'm going to hit Command and B or Control and B on the, um, if you are on a, a Windows system. And what I'm also going to do whilst we're waiting for that is I'm going to delete the original uh, the original installation off my device. Uh, one reason is just to have like a clean install in case there's any any settings that we made before and we want to see how it runs as if the, as if the user has downloaded it fresh. And I think that's that's good practice to do that. Uh, but the other reason is because my device doesn't have a lot of storage space. Uh, I'll actually get an error pop up if 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 I can't install it because of lack of storage space. So I'm deleting out as much as I can. And now you, you guys might not have the same problem here, but this is because I'm actually using a, um, a Google Nexus One, which is around two years old. Ah, so here we go, we've already got an error right here. So clicking on OK. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, so I'm just reading this error down here. Android SDK jar. Uh, those class jar dot plugins. Okay. Now you see, I don't actually know exactly what the issue is here right now. But I'm just going to try to. I might just delete things out. So user download Android Microsoft platform. DX dot jar dex verbose. J -j -j -j. And uh, yeah, I don't understand what is happening here. Uh, I think this sort of relates more to the Android. Perhaps this would make more sense if uh, if I was actually coding inside the Android SDK. But uh, as we're using Unity, I can't really understand this, to be honest. Though I have come across Dex errors before. Uh, usually Dex errors, I've seen Dex errors before, and they've usually been solved by deleting uh, one of the plugins, or one of the plugin files, and then coming back to it again. So... All right, so what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete out all the previous uh, Haze app files that we had. Uh, the reason is is that what we could be having a conflict is because I actually installed version 2.9 or something like this, uh, which is how this check-in button first came in. 
and now I've installed a new one on top of that, it could be some kind of conflict between them. So I'm just going to type HazeApp at the top here. I'm just going to make sure that all of the files that are appearing are called HazeApp. And there's nothing in here which I want to delete. Now you see 2.0.9, you see that's, uh, that's the original one I installed. And so this might be causing a conflict. It happens sometimes with AdMob. Um, you might have a Google Ads like say 4.0.1 SDK uh, inside of your project folder here and then a new one which might be Google 6.0 and that's causing the issues. So it can, it can be hard to hunt down sometimes but so long as you're doing things step by step in your project you will, uh, you'll know at which point you had a problem. So I'm just going to highlight all of these. I'm going to right click and click delete delete and I'm not deleting anything which which I've coded uh, you know it's just a simple case of reinstalling the the SDK the, the unity package uh, you can see that this image is gone now because I just deleted that which is no problem that's totally fine and I'm just gonna double check da, da, da. let's go to my objects plugins add mob so I actually want to go to the Android folder which is this one here and you can see this this NDK here, which is the one that was just installed, I believe. Um, I might just leave this alone since this was a new one. Um, 